Hello, wonderful students. Welcome back to another lovely day of physical science. I guess I can't say chemistry anymore because, well, we're done with our chemistry unit. So um, today we're going to be learning about experimental design. Um, and this is where things actually become really, really detailed because you need to think about how everything can impact the outcome of an experiment. And so we do this through the realm of learning about, or I guess designing a paper airplane. So in this lab, we're gonna be learning problem solving, determining cause and effect, making inferences or observations, um, drawing conclusions. So the purpose of this, I know students get really excited about making an airplane, which is great, but the purpose is to learn the scientific process um, and experimental design through the experiment of creating or you know flying paper airplanes. So the question we could ask is, how does making a change to a paper airplane affect the distance? So really to do this lab, what you're gonna need is really just a single sheet of paper and I'll talk about why, even though we're making two airplanes, realistically we should actually only use one sheet of paper and I'll talk about why later. Um, so first thing you wanna do in any experiment is just come up with a list of modifications that we can make to a regular paper airplane. So you need to list at least five. I'm not gonna do that because this is still inquiry. I still want you to kind of learn by doing. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is just giving some examples. So for example, in my experiment, what I might choose to do is I'm gonna add a bunch of staples. So I'm gonna add a bunch of staples into my airplane to determine how does that affect the distance that the paper airplane flies. Um, picking only one of the modifications, so you need to list at least five things up here that you could do to a paper airplane to change it. You can get creative with it. Um, pick only one of the modifications, variables to test. This variable is called your independent variable. So the thing that you are changing is your independent variable. So in this case, um, I can say that basically adding staples is going to be my independent variable. That is the thing that I am going to change from one of my planes to the next. Um, what is it that I will be measuring in this experiment? Um, that is, what are you looking for a change in? So based on this independent variable, what am I looking to see if it changed? So in this case, since we're gonna be checking for changes in distance, what are we gonna be measuring? Well, we're gonna be looking for a change in distance. Again, I don't know for sure if this is gonna go further or shorter or anything like that. I can make my own predictions, but I need to do the experiment first. So whatever changes, whatever you are measuring, and that's a lot of times how I will simplify this students, um, what you measure. In any experiment, what you measure is called your dependent variable because it's dependent on this one. If I were to simplify an independent variable, it is what you change. And then it says you should do your best to use the same technique every time. So these things are called constants. When we're in class together, I stress this beyond belief. Um, a lot of times students are like, I have to come up with five constants. As a class, we can usually come up with about 14 um, pretty easily. So constants are things that you need to control because realistically in any experiment, you should only have one exact thing change. Anything else that changes is going to affect, um, it's going to affect your results. So you wouldn't know what caused it. To give an example, I think students a lot of times are more familiar with. Picture if you were gonna go through, and I think you've most of you have probably done this at some point, where you um, grow a plant. Okay, so you you pop this, um, you put this plant into a pot, and then you go through, and you can choose to do different things to that plant. So in one of them, though, you always have to have one that you give water. So you might take and you might add water to this one. And then I think sometimes students hate their plants, so they'll go through and they'll give their other plant Red Bull. 
and you're looking for a change in what happens. And if these were the only two differences and this plant, you know, this Red Bull plant grew shorter, you can probably say like, hey, you know what? I think the Red Bull made the difference. However, what if up here you gave this one sunlight? Down here, you kept this one in a box. Well, now, could you distinctively say, like, hey, the Red Bull caused this plant to grow less? Well, no, because now you change two things. You change Red Bull, and it's in the dark, sun, and water. So you don't know which one of those made a difference. So down here, same thing occurs with the plane. So I'm going to give you some examples, and you'll see this in a, either later in this video or in a different video, where I'm going to explain throwing a plane. But here's some things that could affect the distance that a plane flies, aside from just the staples, right? Um, the power that I throw with. Well, if I throw one of the planes harder than the other, I don't know that the staples made a difference. Um, I'll try and come up with some less obvious ones. I'm going to go down to my basement and I'll be throwing these. And I have some um, like air ducts down there, right? So I could say that um, air movement could easily affect a plane. So I need to try and account for that. Um, the angle that I throw it with. Right, if I point one up versus point one down, that's gonna make a difference. So you need to be thinking about things like that with an experiment. Anything else that affects the distance aside from the staples, I need to hold constant. Going on to the next page, a hypothesis is a statement that describes a connection between your independent variable and your dependent variable. So I'm gonna leave this one up to you, but please note that throughout this unit, throughout science, your hypothesis, that is your prediction to what will happen, should always be an if, then, because statement. Where your if statement relates to independent variable. Your um, then statement relates your dependent variable, and you can go back to the the previous page and look at what was my independent variable, what was my dependent variable. So if this happens, then this happens because, and this is just your logic or reasoning. So there's not really a right or a wrong with this, um, but it's just your reasoning. So I'm doing my own experiment with staples. You can do your own with something else, or if you want to follow along with staples, you can. But do you think the staples would increase or decrease the distance and just give a reason why? So your control group is one of the hardest things um, for students to understand. So please note that a control group is, the best way I can say it, it's your comparison to normal. So whatever is considered like the normal thing. So going back to this plant example. Well, which one's normal? The one with water and sunlight or the one with Red Bull and shade? Probably the one with so, um, sunlight and water, right? So the reason that you had to have a plant that you gave water to is because if you had only this one plant with Red Bull, well, you would have no idea if Red Bull made it grow taller or shorter, right? You need the one that's normal, the one that's given water, in order to compare your results to. So thinking about this airplane activity, well, what's going to be my normal? My just regular folded paper airplane or the one that I'm going to load up with staples? I'm going to let you figure that out. Um, and then a mistrial. So students really, really, really like to construe or confuse a mistrial with an error. Um, a mistrial is something that is unexpected and occurs in an experiment that affects the results. So, for example, I go down to my basement and I'm going to throw an airplane. If it smacks into the wall, that's, that's a mistrial. So, something like hitting the wall, that's not going to be an error in my results. Um, that's going to be a mistrial. I shouldn't even count that data because clearly that's not going to give me good data. All right, next up, we're going to go down and actually start making these changes and throwing the airplane.